This lesson we're going to be discussing storyboarding, which is the final phase of the pre-production uh, concept that I'm discussing here. As stated before, we discussed about flowcharting, then we talked about schematics. Well, the next step is storyboarding. So let's dive right into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the concept of storyboarding. But basically, the whole idea of storyboarding is simple. We want to be able to determine, okay, the determine the look and feel of a website, okay, before coding. And I have been around this profession so many years. I know the a very, very poor judgment on a lot of designers that they just go ahead and start building a site without deciding what the look and feel is. And part of the idea of understanding look and feel is deciding what images to use, uh, also what uh, font to use, also the bells and whistles. And now what I mean by bells and whistles, uh, you know, we want to know exactly do we want to use CSS or do we want to use JavaScripting? Okay, all that goes into the look and feel of a website. Okay, other important things we want to discuss do we want to have uh, a, we want banner ads, okay? Do we want to add a place for a Facebook box? Okay, do we want to add RSS feeds? Okay, all these are important when determining the look and feel of a website. The colors, okay, let's not forget that. We want to go over that. So that those are the concepts. Uh, now in the previous lesson, we discussed about schematics and how to merge with the schematics. And then once we were able to merge with the schematics, we come up with the final result. So let's go ahead and dive right into the merging of the schematics, schematics since we already discussed about concepts. All right. Now this was a schematic that we learned from the previous lesson. As you can see, it's pretty much drawn uh, with uh, Google Docs. I've got several boxes here, which uh, are, I'll just go ahead and re-enter. These are images. Okay, and same thing with this guy right here. These are images. Okay, and we haven't decided what kind of image we're going to use. We haven't even discussed what kind of color the, uh, the, that, that we're going to use for the website, whether we're going to have a white background, a gray background, a red background. Uh, all we're doing is deciding where things go at this point. Uh, what I will do is usually on the upper left, this is where the logo, company logo goes. All right, that's the one thing I do know. And then in this case, we decided we're going to put text here. We're going to put a Facebook box here. In this case right here, we're going to add a name and email collection, which is a very popular item in most websites to build an audience, to communicate with your audience. And then we have banner ads, which is either to promote a company event or to promote another event. Either way, this is how the client agreed that the website should look like. Okay, so once you've come up with this, you want to use a, an image manipulating software. And the most popular one, of course, is, oops, let me go ahead and go back there. The most popular one, and, and uh, what we'll do is we'll shrink this. The most popular image uh, manipulating software out there is, obviously, uh, Photoshop. Okay, so you want to use a popular image manipulation Okay, so Photoshop is one of them. I highly recommend using Photoshop. You could use Paint. I don't recommend it. Okay, it's not nearly as uh, robust. But if you can't afford Photoshop, and I believe it's now Photoshop CS, you could go ahead and ask for Photoshop Elements. Okay. So those are the, basically the three ones, the three uh, softwares that you want to use. For the Mac users, there's Paintbrush. Okay. 
But regardless, it's really helpful, especially if whether you're an independent contractor, whether you're working for a company, is for the client or your boss or your supervisors to see the result before we start coding. Nothing is worse than building a website, coding a website, and then getting a big disapproval or a thumbs down later on. We don't want to have that because a lot of time and energy has been utilized and uh, got to start all over again. So the concept, uh, again, storyboarding will definitely save on that. And uh, once you've come up with a schematic like we showed here, <coughs> excuse me, the final result is this. You see the company logo here. You see the three images. Let's toggle back and forth. Three images here, three images here. Here uh, you see basically the, um, the menu, okay? Okay. And then you come up with the text. Again, you have the text right here. Sorry, I'm moving everything over. This is your text. Here's your text right here. Okay, and you see the Facebook box. So you notice that pretty much we put a little life to the schematic. And now, from this, we can go ahead and build our website. That's it for this very short but important lesson. Coming up are other lessons. Uh, stay tuned for with educator.com. Uh, educator, uh,